All right, all right, all right, all right, people. NFL's got your mans working OT in the HQ with all these free agency signings and these trades happening and whatnot. We just got breaking news. Actually, it was last night, but listen, man, I can't, st- I'm not Adam Schefter, all right? I ain't staying up all night for this bull spit. Le'Veon Bell, the saga is over. It's over, as Vince Carter would say. Le'Veon Bell officially signs with the New York Jets. Le'Veon Bell signs with the New York Jets. Contract is big. Not as big as he would have liked it to be. It was four years, $52.5 million, $35 million guaranteed. Makes him the second highest paid running back in the league between Todd Gurley and David Johnson. Now, I know a lot of y'all are going to come into this video with a bunch of bias. And regardless of what I say, regardless of the big facts that I spew out, you're going to say, hey, Bell's the top five running back. Listen to what I got to say, please, before you make your decision. I actually want to know, before I say anything, where are you drafting Le'Veon Bell in fantasy drafts? Um, you can give me a number. You can give me a running back ranking, you know, mid first round, late first round, mid second round. Y'all are smart enough to figure out what I'm talking about. Drop a comment down below. Let me know how you feel about Le'Veon Bell signing with the New York Jets, because I definitely feel some types of way when it comes to fantasy football. That's what we're talking about. 2019 fantasy football, what happens with Le'Veon Bell? My first thought, initial thought before I dove into any of the research, staying away from Bell. Anywhere near the top 15 picks, Bell is not on my board. When you look at why, the reason Bell has been so good in fantasy football throughout the majority of his career is just because of his massive receiving totals, right? He's never had double-digit rushing touchdowns in his career in a single season when guys like Gurley are putting up 15 touchdowns, you know, now with the Rams and their elite offense and whatnot. Bell has never hit double-digit touchdowns. He's had more than eight rushing touchdowns in a year just one time. But, 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 but he has averaged over five receptions a game over the span of his career. If you take out his rookie season, then you're looking at almost five and a half receptions a game. And in his final season with Pittsburgh, He caught more than five passes in a game five separate times, six if you include their divisional playoff game, during Adam Gase's three years as the head coach for Miami, right? Adam Gase is the new head coach for the New York Jets, so I wanted to look at what kind of offense is he running? Does the running back get enough work in the passing game in order to supplement what Bell has been able to give to the fantasy landscape? So during Adam Gase's three years as head coach for Miami, which is, you know, simple math, three times 16, 48 total games, a running back on the Miami Dolphins caught more than five passes in a game five total times. So over that three-year span, they matched what Le'Veon Bell did in 2017. And I'm looking at sharpfootballstats.com. I'm looking at the success rate in which, you know, maybe the volume will be there because Bell's definitely getting that workhorse money. The success rate, Miami's success rate, when throwing two running backs, ranked 26th in 2016. That was Adam Gase's first year with a 38% success rate. They were 29th in 2017. That did improve up to 15th in 2018, but still middle of the pack, nothing to ride home about. And when you look at their offense as a whole, you know, I talked about this in the new head coaching changes video that I put out a month or so ago, which I'll link up here and down below. Miami's offense as a whole ranked 28th or worse. So from 28th to 32nd in the NFL in yards per drive, in points per game, in points per drive, and in time of possession per drive. So their pace, 28th or worse in all of those for every year that Adam Gase was the head coach in Miami. It's just, it's disgusting what he did in Miami. Now, like I said, Bell did command workhorse money, and it's possible that all of these receiving numbers are relevant because they're going to feed him, and they're going to feed him, and they're going to feed him. But you know what else also matters for running backs? Even, you know, if, if, say you're not getting that elite reception total. Say he's getting three and a half receptions a game, and he, you know, he hits a respectable 50 receptions, right? You could still be an elite running back and have 50 receptions on the year. It's hard, but you could do it. You need a good offensive line to be able to rack up the running totals. Last year, the Jets offensive line ranked dead last per football outsiders in run blocking and 30th per PFF's run blocking grades. So that is still very much an issue. They did get Kalichi Osim. I don't really even know how to pronounce his name. A left guard from the Raiders in a trade last week. But listen, he was the 61st graded guard per PFF. He was not good in run blocking, not good in pass blocking. That's 61st graded overall out of 77 qualified guards. So yes, it's an upgrade to the line just because they were so bad. But no, it's not going to be a game changer. It's not what moves the needle for me when it comes to Le'Veon Bell. So that's concern number two. It's a bad offense. It's a bad offensive line. It's a bad head coach who doesn't know how to use his running backs. He has no idea how to use his fucking running backs. He had Kenyon Drake there and he didn't want to give him more than four carries a game last year. He didn't even know that he had Damian Williams in his backfield the entire time that Damian Williams was in Miami and now 
Damian Williams is going to be a stud in Kansas City. So sure, the volume is going to be there. I want nothing to do with Bell. The volume is great, sure, but like the upside for him in fantasy is nowhere near where it was for him in Pittsburgh because of just the lack of the offense. And if they're not driving and if they're not getting enough plays, like I said, 28th or worse in Miami for Gase's offenses, if they're not getting enough plays, like the overall volume is not going to be there. And, and we saw Pittsburgh's offense just always had so many vol uh, so much volume in terms of plays per game and you know pass attempts which is again why Bell probably was so successful there it's just it's not the same high powered offense so I don't want you to go in thinking that Bell is just going to get the same receiving type numbers and he's not going to get the goal line looks I mean, not that he's not going to get the goal line looks he will get those carries but the volume of them is not there I was just looking at the numbers and the Jets running backs in total last year had six carries inside the five yard line there were, let me see, one, two, something like 25 running backs on their own that had more than six goal line carries last year. So the Jets do not give the running backs opportunities down by the goal line, not because they don't hand the ball off to them, but because they don't get there enough. Yes, this offense should take a step up with Sam Darnold in his second year, and things could be a little bit better, but I just think it's a miserable situation, and it might look something like the Cardinals with David Johnson with a bad head coach that doesn't know how to scheme correctly and just a, a bunch of bunch of nonsense so where I have Bell ranked right now in my rankings he's sitting at RB11 in my half PPR rankings he's right after Nick Chubb but he's right before Damian Williams um, that might switch I'm not really sure he's the same tier as them as with Joe Mixon Dalvin Cook and Marlon Mack so that's just to give you a gist of where I have him ranked right now in fantasy of course the volume is there so you can't ignore it altogether um, and if you want my rankings, if you want all my rankings, standard, half PPR, full PPR, no matter what you play in, broken down by tiers, that is in my season-long draft guide, which I put out every summer, available for pre-order right now on BigDogsDraftGuide.com. You'll get a discount if you pre-order before March 25th. In that guide is a whole bunch of good shit. Um, so you can just go check it out, BigDogsDraftGuide.com. If you think I get in-depth with my videos and this analysis, man, the season-long guide is going to absolutely blow you away. So go check that out. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you are new. We're talking everything 2019 fantasy football all throughout the offseason, all throughout the summer, all through the season. Hopefully bringing y'all home the chip. I love you. I'm out.